Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Chip, that's Thunder, and this is a 1955 Ford F100 that's been in my family for about seven or eight years now. And this is also Chip, a few days later with a shave and a haircut. I got rained out the day of filming this, didn't think standing under a tree during a thunderstorm next to a big steel truck was the best of ideas. So I'll be jumping in from time to time. And oh, that popping sound you might hear is just rain hitting my microphone during recording. It's a truck. That's probably the most important thing about this. We, I say we, my family, I use it as a truck. I haul motorcycles around town in it. I put mulch in it. I, you know, take it to the hardware store to get a new storm door. It's what we use to haul things around town. From the hot rod community and the truck community, the 54, 5, and 6 Ford F100s are some of the most coveted trucks ever built. Uh, they're up there with late 60s, early 70s C10s, or you know maybe like the OG Lightning, some of those more iconic trucks throughout the years. They're desired in those communities because it's a bit of a blank canvas. You can do a lot with these trucks, all sorts of customization, and they sure are pretty. <laughs> Beauties in the eye holder, entirely subjective. That being said, it's a good looking truck. First impressions you'll get is its lack of just about everything. And by everything, I mean literally, it doesn't really even have door locks. It kind of has this, but that's not really a lock. There aren't any on the driver's side. That's about it in terms of security. I would say its best security feature is probably the transmission itself, the three on a tree. For those who aren't familiar, it is a manual transmission, but it is still a column shifter. Have fun with that. The second thing you notice is the complete and other lack of safety. And it's performing an error before seat belts, airbags, or crumple zones, or collapsible steering columns for that matter. This thing is all metal. <laughs> it does make a satisfying sound when the door closes. This was rebuilt right at the beginning of the space age, the interstates. You gotta keep that in mind. During the middle of the 20th century, the prevailing thought of safety was to make it beefier and stronger. I mean, that's a joke about these things is the vehicle will survive. You won't. Like, they don't make them like they used to for a reason. Turns out we really need to dissipate the energy in order to make things safer, you know, which is why you see like race cars explode when they hit things now. All of that energy of the vehicle in motion gets transferred to you. Your body's traveling at 60 miles an hour and suddenly comes to a complete stop as do your organs inside of you and everything else, and it's not pretty. In terms of creature comforts, it does have a separate heater that will melt your boots off if you're not careful. Oh, and AC is just a hood vent. Good times. And don't forget to oil your air filter. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of talk these days on trucks. Even the small ones are continuing to get bigger and bigger. Hell, the new Ford Ranger is as big as the F-150 was back in the 90s. I mean, just look at the dimensions on this thing. Overall length of the 55 F-100 was 189 inches and some change. 2023 F-150 Crew Cab, the most popular version of the F-150, is 231 inches. It's three and a half feet longer. Really the biggest difference is wheelbase, the measurement of the wheels, the center of the wheel from the front to the back. In 55, it was 110 inches. In 2023, it's 145 inches. Again, an extra three feet. That's where it's coming is there in the middle. In terms of the truck's personal history, it is still in the same town in which it was originally sold in. It was built in Kansas City. It spent its whole life in Kansas City and it continues to live in Kansas City. You can see the original color here, a regatta blue paint code X special order. So what's it like to live with a 69 year old truck? It's old and it's slow. You can never be in a hurry with this thing between the transmission power. I mean, yes, it's a V8. It is a 292 cubic inch V8. That makes 200 horsepower. Old horsepower is a little different. It's not quite measured the same, but the slowness isn't that big of a deal living in the city. Being in an urban area, it's not that the top speed of it really isn't the limiting factor. It's from an era before the interstates. It gets around town just fine because it's not, I'm not expecting it to go 75, 80 miles an hour. It's a strange way older vehicles kind of are, are much more of a, a engaging drive. You can never really be in a hurry with this guy. But that's kind of the joy of it. It's, it's very, it's weird to say, you're not part of the machine but it's it's just because they're not safe and so you have to treat it like everybody on the road is out to kill you kind of like a motorcycle really just an act in defense of driving the whole time and your head is always on a swivel 
and don't red people's blind spots, most importantly. That being said, it does have the visibility of a convertible, despite only having one mirror, which I think was a bit of an afterthought. You can see everything around you, it's all glass. It never did get converted to unleaded fuel, so I still have to put in a lead additive every time I put in gas, and it does take 91 octane, mainly because that's just ethanol free, and these old carbureted vehicles don't like ethanol. It smells old too. <laughs> old cars weren't the most efficient, with their fuel so you smell like gasoline it doesn't really burn oil or leak oil that badly but it's just how they smell there's been a lot of work done in the last 70 years on nvh noise vibration and harshness and isolating the cabin and the passengers from the road and the outside elements that's not the case here so what does the future hold well it's going to a farm up north literally it's going to a farm up north with my parents uh, to get some work done, to get some body work done, to have the paint restored or resprayed. We'll see once we get into it. Needs a little bit of love. You can see the original patina underneath. Whether or not that is salvageable has yet to be discovered. We'll see once we get into it. There will be a follow up later this year to show you what all is done to the truck. So make sure you subscribe to see that follow up here in a few months once we get all the work completed. And thanks for watching.